Hello everybody, this is Mr. Fowley and welcome to 4.1b. Uh, hopefully you have watched 4.1b, 4.1a, because it was gloriously short. Um, 0 to 0 0.4 is nonpolar, that's where I was. Oh my goodness. Make sure I got my pen working here. All right. So 0 to 0 0.4 is nonpolar, so what I did was I looked right. Hey. Looked right here and I had 3 to 3.5. That's 0.5, which meant it is polar because it's in that region. F to F would be 4 minus 4, which would be 0, which would be nonpolar. And lead, PB, 1.8 to fluorine, the difference between those two is 4 minus 1.8 is 2.2. And that would be, hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. Ionic. What is C to H? Now I'm missing H, and I apologize for that. H is 2.1. So carbon is 2.5. Hydrogen is 2.1. So that means this is 0.4. Now I forgot to write down what 2.2 meant. Ionic. And 0.4 means nonpolar. Now nonpolar is still covalent. Ionic is different, and electrons are transferred. Nonpolar means they're shared evenly. Nonpolar covalent bonds are between two metals. The nonpolar covalent bond, electrons are shared evenly. Ah, oh, super sweet. Electronegativity difference is 0 to 0.4. They are mostly diatomic elements, meaning you're bonded to yourself, right? F minus F, whatever it is, it's going to be 0. O minus O, whatever it is, it's going to be 0. Cl minus Cl, whatever it is, is going to be 0. They're the weakest. They have the lowest boiling point and lowest melting point. They never conduct electricity because they have no ions. This is important now. Electricity is a flow of ions. That's a great pod quiz question. So why does it conduct electricity? There's no ions in it. It's a poor heat conductor and it doesn't dissolve in water. So things that have nonpolar covalent bonds don't do any of those. Polar covalent bonds are two nonmetals mostly. Um, there's uneven sharing. The atom with the higher electronegativity will have a slight negative charge. The other atom will have a slight positive charge. A molecule with an uneven distribution of charges is said to have a dipole. Di means two, pole means end. Okay? The delta symbol, it's a little delta, represents the partial charge in each side of the molecule as indicated. The arrow symbol points towards the negative side of the molecule. And these dissolve in water. Okay? So if I look at this, um, oxygen has a 3.5 electronegativity and nitrogen is 3.0 so that means oxygen's more negative so it's delta negative delta positive this is the negative end it's more attractive electrons if there's two electrons here they don't stay in the middle this one says hey I don't want to be with that loser nitrogen I want to hang out with oxygen a little more and nitrogen is sad but it still comes back once in a while out of pity but that's about it or when no one else will talk to it what type of bond is made of two metals? Hey, that's a metallic bond. Conducts of the solid. Hey, that's a metallic bond. Remember, the only ones that conduct are metals. These are metallic bonds have the properties of metals. Oh, a low melting point would be covalent. Has an electronegativity difference of 2.2. That's ionic. Has an electronegativity difference of 0.2. That's the smallest one. That's nonpolar covalent. Transfers electrons. Hey, that's ionic. Shares evenly. Oh, shares evenly. Non ended. Nonpolar covalent. Has the highest boiling point. That's the one that is the strongest. It will hold together the most. That is ionic. Ionic is the strongest of the bonds. It's soluble in water and high electronegativity difference. So if it's soluble in water, it's either ionic or um, polar covalent, but because it has a high electronegativity difference, it's ionic. It's soluble in, soluble in water, and low electronegativity difference is polar covalent. Covalent. Naming molecular compounds. Remember, there'll always be two metals, so it'll be something like CO2. You use prefixes, mono is one, di is two, now be careful, it's di, not bi, it's di. Tri is three, tetra is four, not quad, tetra is four, penta is five, 
Hex is 6, Hepta is 7, Octa is 8, Nona is 9, Deca is 10. Has to end in I and sound good. Let's see if I put the other things. Yep. So carbon and oxygen are two nonmetals, so this would be carbon dioxide. <gasps> I didn't use the one for this. And we'll learn the tricks. Let carbon monoxide be your guide. There's no mono on the first one. So you can have a die or a tri or whatever it is. Um, and there also will be no double O's. Like you're not going to have monoxide is monoxide. It will not be monoxide, although that would be more fun. So if I were to name these, SF6 would be sulfur, and I don't put a prefix because it's one, hexafluoride. Phosphorus, no prefix because the first one's a one. Pentachloride, uh oh, two of these. Dizenon, oct oxa, no, it's not an oxen. Octa bromide. Notice how I just have them end in ide and sound good. So fluorine becomes fluoride, chlorine becomes chloride. It'll work. This is water. Don't be a sucker. <laughs> Try nitrogen, N3, monosulfide, S1. Hexasulfur, sulfur is S, hexa means 6. Dichloride, chloride is Cl, di means 2. Deca nitrogen, nitrogen 10. Monoxide, oxygen, mono means 1. And this one's not meant for you anymore. I apologize for leaving it in there. Do not reduce molecular formulas. Gee whiz, can you tell I'm having computer problems? Do not reduce molecular formulas. Molecular formulas are exact formulas. So we need to learn that. Molecular formulas are exact formulas. Reducing molecular formulas changes their identity. Your DNA is basically just carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur with some numbers. If you reduce it, it would imply that it's just this and not like a big complex molecule. Cause a mutation, mutations are almost always bad, and you won't be able to do chemistry anymore because you won't be able to think anymore or be able to breathe anymore. So it's important that we know exact formulas for compounds. I don't know why I put that in there. Oh, molecular compounds. Okay, so never reduce them. So, for example, if I have S2O8, I never want you to write SO4. Okay, no, 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 no. Differences between bond types. So this is the meat and potatoes of it. Metallic bonding is two metals. Notice covalent bonding is two nonmetals. Ionic bonding is a metal and a nonmetal. Metallic bonding has non-directional sharing, meaning it shares with lots of them at once. Covalent bonding has valence electron sharing. And ionic bonding has valence electron transfer. So they're not sharing. This is sharing between two things. This is sharing with everybody. Everybody, 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 everybody. And this one is transfer between two. Um, conducts a solid and a liquid. That looks like an I, but it's a liquid. Never conducts, no ions conducts as liquid or aqueous because that allows ions to flow. Um, metallic bonding, variable melting point. Covalent, low melting point. And ionic bonding, highest melting point because it is strongest. Uh, metallic metals are insoluble and of variable strength. Um, covalent bonding, only polar is soluble. And covalent is the lowest strength of these three types. And ionic bonding, most of them, not all of them, most of them are soluble. That's the highest strength. We get to review covalent shares, ionic transfers, and metallic shares with all. Not all sharing is the same. Um, polar and nonpolar, so polar is uneven. Um, use prefixes, but not on the first mono, so. Aloha, happy homecoming! Toodles.